Damn it. Next one's not for another 20 minutes. So why didn't you stop him? Normally he's late. Today's early. I'm going to miss Professor Andrews' lecture on nighttime photography now. So what? I miss all my classes. And lectures, they have to be the most boring of all. Two and a half hours of some ex-science award-winning professor rambling on about how he's right and everybody else is wrong. I like the professor's lectures. Don't you think she's a bit funny in the head? No, I want to learn so that I can become a photographer. Mm. I'm going to miss it now because of the bus. I hate bus drivers. He's got it in for me, you know. What makes you say that? Oh, Ali, you're so blind. The other day, when you were off, and I had to take the bus on my own, the bus was completely empty, right? It wasn't even that sad-looking idiot who sits in the front seat. You know the one. I oh, know, the one who's always grumpy-looking. Yeah, it's right, so OK. So maybe he's just had a difficult life. What? Nothing. Anyway, do you know what the bus driver said to me? He said... Nice to get you alone at last. I just looked at him and thought, whatever. He must be in love with you. What? Blokes like him don't know what the word means. They just want to get their grubby little paws on innocent young girls like us. <laughs> There's nothing innocent about you. Yeah, well, when I say screw them all. Not literally. Can I ask you a question? Yes. As long as it's not the one about where babies come from, I think Mummy should have told you that by now. Why did you talk so much bull? There's another word for bottom. Posterior. Yes, well done, Ali. Any other words? I've just got in from uni. My brain is about ready to give up. Oh, I'm sorry, love. How about a nice cuppa?
Are you all right? I'm fine, Mum. You sure? How bad was it? It was just mild. You sure? Yeah, but I think I'll stay home from uni today. Yeah, it's probably best, love. My phone's off. I just needed some time to myself. Wasting the film in that camera of yours again. You never show me any of your photos. Never asked to see them. Well, I want to. Really? Yeah. Everyone knows you're a good photographer. Who have you been talking to? People. Who? Well, Mr. Bird, for a start. Who are you talking to him? He talks in his sleep. He didn't. Of course not. Mr. Bird, he's so old. <laughs> just playing with you, Alan. How you doing, you do that? So, what's up with you? Nothing, I told you, I just needed some time to myself. You better not be sick. I'm not, I, it's just a bad night, I'm, I'm not sick. Good. Do you know we're best friends? And best friends would do anything for each other. You've been pairing me off again. It's not like that. I really don't feel up to it. You listen here. You just think back to all those times I've been there for you, Ali. You owe me. Oh, I know. Yeah, so you owe me. It's nothing bad. Gary and his mate have invited us out Saturday afternoon. He says he knows this cool place. Gary Deacons? Yeah, he's well fit. <laughs> His mate wouldn't have to be Jeff Stilwell, would it? And there was me thinking you were oblivious to the male sex. Jeff Stilwell is an idiot. I can identify an idiot when I see one. Jeff's all right. He's only got one thing on his brain. Yeah, they all have. Fine, but if I come along, I'm not doing anything, all right? He's a nice guy. Yeah, but if he comes near me... He won't. Chill out. It's just a friendly day out. Did you think I was asking you to marry you? You better not be a pig, Gary. Do I normally pick them ugly? Well, you know how I like them. We're big, pendulous, swinging, you know, and big! Here they are. Is that her? That's her. She's a bit of all right. She's flat as a pancake, mate. You be nice to her. This is my big chance with Lisa, so don't you screw it up for me with your big loud mouth. Yeah, all right. Got it? Yeah. Gimp. Yeah, all right, I've got it. Oh, yeah. Hello, Jeff. Taking uh, a look around. Are we allowed to be here? It's so beautiful. It's okay. Lisa? Where have they gone? Oh, don't worry. I'll show you around. Okay. History freaks. What? Not one of those greasy hippies off time to. You seem pretty interested in the house. You into all that archaeology crap. 
For your information, archaeology is when you dig a hole in the ground, not looking at buildings. Whatever. Hey, don't freak yourself out about it. How about we go down that garden bench over there? What? Well, you get a really good view of the house from down there. Really? Nice view, isn't it? It's beautiful. I don't know why I've never heard about this place before. I never believed a place could be so captivating. You are a strange girl. What? Well, you're not like most of the girls I know. You mean I've got a brain? Well, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think you're doing? Come on, Ali. There's no one around. There's no one looking. You know you want me. I do not, thank you. I knew today would be a complete waste of time. Drop dead. Well, you know what your problem is? You're colder than the Antarctic, you frigid cow. I think he works here. Where? He was chasing me. I thought you said this place was empty at this time of day. It is. Normally it is. Well, he's not here now. Well, he's probably got to phone the police. You know what these security guards are like? Mad in the head. Look, he was probably just trying to scare you off. Yeah, well, he's done a good job. I don't know about you two, but I'm out of here. <laughs> well, what about Ali? Where is she? Oh, Jeffrey! You gimp. She should sleep it off now. Can I ask how she got herself into that state? I don't know. Her friends bought her home. They found her passed out on the floor. Has she been drinking? Well, no. You see, that's the assumption I made at first. But, in fact, she hasn't been drinking. Well, what then? 
Well, she's clearly got herself worked up over something. It's funny, you know, my honest opinion, it's almost as if she's been frightened by something. Frightened? Terribly frightened. Work. Jane's given me a lift. Also, I left the car keys here in case you need the car. And just let her come for you this morning. What is it? I don't know. It looks important. Dear Ali, thank you for your letter and photographs requesting a position within our media agency. I am pleased to inform you that your photographs show promise. And we wish to offer you a freelance role within our media section. Yours sincerely, Barrett Williams, editor, Imagine Media Agency. fainted like that before. You still think you saw a ghost? I'm not sure. I don't remember that much. Anyway, not the only one who got scared. Some weirdo frightened the life out of Jeff while he was peeing up a tree. He went as white as a sheet. The idiot. At Highlands? Yeah, of course. Anyway, what are you up to today? You there? Yeah, yeah. I have to go back to Highlands. Why? You're not going ghost hunting, are you? No, no, of, of course not. I'm, I need to go back. Are you sure? I've been offered a job and they're looking for stories. There's a story there, I know it.
Mr. Williams. Yes, I received your letter this morning. Thank you. A story? Yes, I have a story I think your readers might be quite interested in. It's a wonderful location. Such a beautiful historic house and garden. I don't know what it is about the place, but it has a presence I can't describe. You have to be here for a while just to take it away. Yeah, I'm at the house now. I'll be taking a tour inside soon. There'll be a story here, I'm sure of that. Okay. I'll see you in a week. Excuse me. You're 
that's an out over the road. The tour is moving on now. Who was she? People have asked me about that portrait. We found her hidden in the basement when we did the major restoration work. Hidden? Yes, we found a small room behind a wall. Had an assortment of items in it, including that portrait. We don't know for sure, but it's believed to be a friend of the family of Meredith, dating back to about the early 1800s. But we don't know who the artist was. Something about her. I'm not sure what it is. It's like I'm looking at my own ghost. Yeah, there is a resemblance. Look, if you want to know more about the painting, you might like to speak to Peter. Peter? Yes, the head gardener. He's lived here for as long as I can remember. He's always got stories to tell. So maybe he knows something about the lady in the portrait. see any reflection and uh, doesn't appear to be the end of a spool. And you say you took these in natural daylight? Yeah. What do you think it could be? Well, it could be a number of things. Uh, chemical residue on the negatives, solarisation during development. My main concern, it's none of those. I'd have to look at the negatives, but uh, since I've known you for so long, I think we can rule out lack of experience. Do you think someone could have tampered with the film? No, it was a new roll sealed in its packaging. Well, if they are fakes, then they're the best fakes I've ever seen. No sign of manipulation. And if they're not fakes, then that leaves only one conclusion. Where did you say you took these? I, I don't know. Look, I have to go. I'll get back to you. Oh, we can check them out of the university lab. Come on, Ali. Overgrown round here. You might stick to the path. Do you know if the church on the outskirts of the grounds is connected to Highlands in any way? Oh, you mean St Peter's Church? Yeah. All the important people that lived at the house are buried up there. I'm trying to get through to it. <laughs> well, you don't want to go that way. You want to go down here. Are you going up there yourself? Yeah, why? Well, it's a bit creepy. There's a sunken graveyard. Really? Yeah, the church is on the top of a steep hill and all the graves are cut into the bank all the way down. You might be careful with your feet up there. I mean, I know the place and I've fallen loads of times. Oh, well, thank you. If you just follow that path right out to the end, it'll take you right there. Thanks. Bye.
Are you okay? Better now, thanks. I suppose everyone's entitled to one good scare. This is a graveyard. We're better. I don't know what I'm doing here, really. Have you strolled over from the house? Yes. I'm Father Seabrook. Hello, Father. I'm Ali. How can I help you, my dear? I understand everyone who lived at Highland's house is buried here. No, that's not true. Not everybody from the house is buried here. Only the direct family is buried here. What about the servants and staff? Oh, no, that rarely happened. Why not? Read your history books, my dear. <laughs> servants were poor. They couldn't afford it. Now, I have a service in a few moments. I have to go. Thank you for talking to me. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> you know, from time to time, you see strange things around here, but you learn to live with it.
there. I'm allowed to be here. My name is Ali. Is anybody there? I'll let you go in a minute. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Did, did you just call that duck Derek? <laughs> yes, my dear. Oh, you may laugh, but in duck society, Derek is a very important name. That one was named after my brother. He's another good-for-nothing show-off, but that's another story. I'm Peter. I'm the gardener here. I have been for as long as I can remember. Well, I'm Ali. I've been looking for you. Are you sure you're all right? I'm fine. I'm just a bit disorientated. Oh. I'm here doing an article on Highland's house. The tour guide up at the house said that you might know a bit more about its history. Oh, they did, did they? Yes. Well, I have lived here for many years. I suppose I have a few over the years. You pick up a few stories. Well, what do you want to know? Well, there's a portrait of an unknown girl hanging in the banqueting hall. I understand it was found in the basement. I was there when they found it. Have you seen the basement? You should have seen it before they started. I mean, they really did a really good job. It's no wonder that the portrait was lost for so many years. That's why I'm feeling a bit disorientated. It's strange, but I thought I saw a ghost down there. Yes. It's probably just my imagination, you know, being frightened and everything. Or maybe I dreamt it. Well, the, the mind can play tricks on you from time to time. Although, I don't want to frighten you or anything. But there is a ghost that haunts the house and gardens. Only a few people have seen it. I have myself once or twice, only glimpses mine. They say it's Lord Emmett Meredith, and he's been searching the grounds, looking for his lost love for over 200 years. There was a scandal about the Lord and a servant girl. What do you make of that? Is this our ghost? It wasn't there when I took the shot. I had this feeling someone was watching me all day yesterday. And then I was looking through my shots and I came across this one. It looks more like a girl to me, though. Highlands is a very sensitive place, Sally. I sometimes, too, have the feeling that someone's watching over me, but I know they mean me no harm. I figure if they did, they would have done something by now. Good heavens, is that the time? I must get I don't want to keep you from your work. <laughs> Gardening isn't my work, it's my life. But I do have other things to attend to. Now look, you search wherever you like. The gardens are open to you at all times. I'll arrange that with the house. Ah, oh, I nearly forgot. I have a few things that might be of interest to you back at the stable block. Some items that might be of interest to the story and yourself. They're back in my room. You're welcome to visit any time you like. They don't mean anything to me. But to an educated lady like yourself, well, <laughs> you may be able to put something together. Thank you. I'd like that.
You can see me. You can actually see me. Yes. You will not understand how long I have waited for this moment. Who are you? You know me. I know you do. I am Emmett. You're Emmett? The Duke's son? But you're a... Ghost. A ghost? Well, that isn't possible, is it? I do not know. But you can see me. And this means you can help me. I couldn't see you just now. It takes time, being here at Highlands, to become involved. You have to take it all in. Most people come and go, but you, you keep coming back. You've been drawn in. I do not have all the answers, but I believe over time, your eyes adjust to what is really here. You're the one who frightened Jeff out of his skin. He was most despicable. I do not care for his sort around here. I saw to it that he will never return. Why didn't you do the same to me? I could see you were different. You have a heart and a soul. You've been following me. I must confess I have. It was you I saw. But only because I wanted you to return here to Highlands. I have been locked in this prison of paradise for over 200 years. Its beauty is my hell. I am alone and have remained that way because I cannot find the one I am searching for. You're searching for your lost love? She is nowhere to be found. Why can't you find her? She is lost. I know she wanders these gardens searching for me as I do for her. I think I may have seen her in the grounds. You have? It was only for a moment, and then she was gone. She is here. Somewhere. Just waiting for me to find her. I have tried for over 200 years to reach out to her. Why are you here? I'm finding I'm drawn to the place. You are having dreams? Yes. Dreams you cannot understand? Yes. How do you know about that? You must find out for yourself. I can help you if you wish. Point you in the right direction, but only you can unlock the mystery. I feel you are the key to everything, Ali. You know my name? Somehow, I have always known. Emmett.
saw you coming, so I brought us a nice couple. <laughs> These are beautiful. Do you think some of them might have belonged to our mysterious ghosts? Ghosts? Yes. Then you've seen something just now. Something else. Something new? He's kind, yet sad. A gentleman. He's lost and needs my help. You have some connection to Highlands, I'm sure of that. I've never been here before in my life. None of my family even know this place exists. Have you ever heard of Professor Keena Hennigan? the famous Scottish scientist who studied pre-life. I read his book. In it, he talks about past lives, reincarnation. You think I used to live here? There is a possibility. That is why you connect. The portrait in the banqueting room. It looks like me. Maybe that person was related to me. Or maybe was you. Was me? Perhaps. I could be wrong. And you can tell everybody about the crazy ramblings of a lonely old man. But what if I'm right? Then we have the most fantastic story ever written. I've seen her, you know. Who? The other ghost. I think it's who Emmett is searching for. She seems lonely too. I've seen Emmett. This other ghost is news to me. Perhaps you should ask him. You don't want to talk to me. I know you're there. Ali. Emmett! It's so good to see you. <laughs> I know who I was. Who were you, Ali? I lived here once. That you did. You know who I was. Was I a lady of the house? I do not wish to say. Please. most disappointing to you. I'm the girl in the portrait, aren't I? Aren't I? Yes, you are. But you are not a lady of the house. My father would not permit it. I don't understand. He took away everything I have ever loved. He destroyed my life. What happened? I'm sorry, Ali. You look so much like her. So beautiful. My gentle Catherine. Catherine? Is that my name? That is her name. Tell me what happened. If you wish to learn the truth, seek out our correspondence. He knows more than he is saying. Who? Peter, the gardener. I must leave you now. Don't go. I must. Feel up to telling me what happened with Emmett? Yes. He told me that you know more than you're letting on. He did, did he? I see he was right. Yes. What is it you have? I have some letters from the 1800s. Really? Yeah. Would you like to see them? Oh, yes. They're in that drawer. Those are the letters that were found with the portrait of the girl. Why do you have them, then? Well, I shouldn't tell you this, so you must promise not to tell anyone. Okay. 
I was there when they found the portrait. When no one was looking, I found the letters. Now, I know I shouldn't have done it, but I just wanted to see them, to read them. Besides, do you think they'd have let me? Not on your life. They'd have had them locked away somewhere. So nobody's read these letters since they were written? That's right. I believe they are love letters. Why haven't you read them? Now that I have them, I haven't been able to bring myself to do so. Maybe they are better left unread. How beautiful. Anyway, it's getting on. I have a lot of things to do. I can't leave it to the hired help or we'll be in a real mess. I'll leave you in peace to read the letters. Make yourself comfortable and I'll be back later. Thank you. My dearest Catherine, I think back to our first meeting when I saw you that day in the garden. I thought you were the loveliest creature I had ever beheld. Your beauty and manner entranced me from the first moment I caught sight of you. Indeed, I believed I had seen an angel. Please forgive my boldness once more, but you have captured my very soul, and your beauty holds me its willing prisoner. I long to see you again, to be in your presence. Perhaps a walk in the East Garden. You are the new companion to the hostess, are you not? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Do not let it trouble you. I come here myself on many occasions, just to contemplate. It is a tranquil place, and one which should be used for such pleasures. Do you wish me to remain in your service, sir? What is your name? Catherine, sir. I believe that everyone, no matter what position they hold, is given an opportunity to prove themselves within society. I trust this is your first position at a stately home. Oh, yes, sir, it is. Then I shall consider the matter as finished with. You may continue your visit to this place if you wish. Any such visits will be upheld with much secrecy. Now, back to your duties. I will, sir. Thank you, sir. Kindest Emmet, I thank you for your letter and hope that you are in good health. Indeed, sir, I feel you are bold in both your writing and your conversations with young ladies. Your kindness, however, these past days has brought a warmth and happiness to me that I had long forgotten. Your humour and gentlemanlike manner have made me feel welcome here at Highlands, and for that I thank you and remain forever in your debt. I do own to being flattered by your attentions toward me, however imprudent they may be and confess to being happy and obliging to meet you tomorrow in the garden. Loveliest Catherine, my dreams are filled with you walking in fields of daffodils. I remember the first time that I held your hand, so cold, how you trembled. Your eyes would not rise to meet mine, and you called me Sir. You owe no debt to me, dearest Catherine. Rather, it is I that am indebted to you. You have made my life whole. I long to walk boldly with you on my arm and declare to the world that I love you. But for now, I know that it must remain a secret. Will you meet me tomorrow at the end of the Woodland Lane, that I may enjoy the pleasure of your company once more? It is at the far side of the estate and we should not be observed there. Never bow your head to me, Catherine. I shall be dismissed for looking into my master's face. I shall never have you dismissed from my service. Is that what you wish, sir? It is. It is my father's wish that I marry. I find this lady to be the most distasteful person one can conceive to be with for even a single evening. Lady Pinkleton will surely have me dismissed if she witnesses your advances toward me. Lady Pinkleton mourns her lost youth. You are a man of outward speaking. I am. Will you walk with me? A hostess companion's duty is not to walk with the master of the house. But as your master and employer, you must do as I ask. I'm not sure how to. I've never walked with the Lord before. It will be my honour to show you. Kindest Emmet, I believe that daffodils will forever hold a special place in my heart. 
It will always remind me of our first walks together and the kindness you continue to show me. You have shown yourself to be a man of honour and integrity. I dare to dream that one day I may take your arm openly and walk proudly at your side. These past weeks have been the happiest of my life. I look forward to our meeting tomorrow. I caught the merest sight of you today as you entered the hostess's chamber. It was as though the very air had been snatched from my body and left me unable to breathe. But a glimpse of your golden hair sends my heart racing. I fear that I have fallen completely in love with you, my darling Catherine. It is as though Highlands itself has come alive since you arrived. I feel your spirit coursing through its very stones and mortar. In the garden, the breeze sings out your name. The trees and the flowers herald your beauty. You, dearest Catherine, have given my life meaning. Does my walking please you, sir? It does. I'm uneasy at the thought. When I saw you that first day by the pond, my eyes were captivated. Indeed, I have not slept since, and every passing moment has brought me to the brink of madness. I have therefore decided to approach you with my desires. You are too bold, sir. I can see that you are a well-educated lady, and that your upbringing must have been one of strictness. It is a given. You do not descend from a servant. Is it that easy to surmise? What is your family name? Friedmeier of Nottingham. And why are you here? It is a story I cannot tell. A sinful tale that harms me in every way at the mention of its contents. Then I will advise myself to be more cautious in our next meetings. I presume you wish to remain as companion to the hostess until your time is right. If it is fitting with you, sir. It is not fitting with me. But I will let the game continue for as long as is needed. Thank you, sir. My name is Emmett. At your service. My dearest Emmett, I thank you for keeping my secret. It means a great deal to me. I beg you, though, to consider carefully your actions. I feel certain that your father, the Duke, would not look kindly on your advances toward me. I fear, as much as you have feelings for me, this situation could place you in great risk. I confess I hold great affection for you and treasure our times together. You have brought much joy into my world, and I hope that I too could at last be truly happy. I could not have hoped to meet such a wonderful man. My dearest Catherine, I have made the arrangements for our travel. Tonight we leave Highlands under cover of dark. Tonight we will begin a new life, and we will never be apart again. You have captured my heart and my soul. They belong only to you. Our love has joined us forever. I love you, sweet Catherine. You have made me the happiest man alive. I have something for you. never find out about our love, dear Catherine. It is too late. Then we must leave tonight. Return to your duties, and I will make the arrangements for our travel. You would give all this up for me? I would give up my life for you. You've changed my world, kind sir. You've made me believe in life. I couldn't bear any harm to come to you. It was nothing. 
It means everything. Good morning. The last thing I remember was looking through those letters. I must have been tired. You look so peaceful, I didn't like to wake you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm intruding on your home. Oh, don't worry about it, my dear. It's nice to have your company. I have to go. I have to find Emmett. He needs me. How will you find him? He will find me. You don't want to talk with me. I was your Catherine. I read the letters. I know everything except what happened after she disappeared. Please tell me. Please, I need to know. I knew you'd come back. Now you know. But you should know everything. You should know the real reasons. Please tell. My father was a strong, noble, and arrogant businessman and a wealthy landowner. I remember when I was not even eight years old, I was playing a game with a young servant boy named Evan, the one where you ride a silver kitchen tray down the staircase. My father was furious when he found out. Not furious at my possibly ruining his grand staircase. He was incensed that I was playing with a servant boy as my equal. I was a small child and did not understand Evan and his family were dismissed that same day. Evan was my only friend at that time in my life. I was, though, still to feel the full cruelty of my father's wrath. What is it, father? You cannot comprehend my anger. Now I see it with my own eyes. My son is everything I damn in the world. I do not understand. I had assumed that the rumours of you and this servant girl were purely myth. Now I see it is much more. It is, father. Ah, you are using her desire for your lust. No, father. It is more than that. How can it be more? She is a lowly hostess companion. You are a duke's son. You cannot continue to see this girl. It is not love. It is lust. It is love, father. It has always been love. 
I was afraid of this. I was afraid that you would force me to take action. This is a copy of my new will. I have just taken it to my solicitor. It forbids you to marry this girl or to have any contact with her. You cannot do this. I shall do as my heart desires. If you choose to be with this girl, then you will no longer be my son. All titles, deeds and monies will be held in trust until you marry a decent girl. A decent girl, father. I presume she would be of your choosing. Of course. I know of several ladies who have come of age. Daughters of wealthy landowners. And what of love? There is no love. You are young in heart and young in brain. She is but a lowly hostess companion. Once a servant, always a servant. If you continue to be with her, I shall be forced to take matters into my own hands. She will never give you anything. You will be left penniless. With no title, no money, nothing. On the contrary, Father, I shall have everything I have ever desired. I will be the wealthiest man alive. He made her disappear. That was the last time that I saw her. We had arranged to run away together, but my father found out. I never saw her again. Never said goodbye. Now you are here. You know what happened to her. You know what happened to my Catherine. I don't. Your dreams. She is in your dreams. But how do you know about that? I had another dream. I was at the back of Highland's house. A man was painting my portrait. Perhaps it was not a dream. It felt so real. Maybe it wasn't a dream. He was calling to me. In the dream, I was the girl in the portrait. The portrait in the banqueting room is Catherine. I was painting her portrait. Your portrait. How many of our letters did you read? All of them, I think. But then they suddenly just stop. What happened after that? I do not know. But you do. And this is why you feel compelled to return here over and over. Because you have dreams of being Catherine. I keep having dreams about being here. Most of the time it's just myself in the gardens being chased by these two evil-looking men. Who do you think these men could be? My father's men. One was a repulsive character called McCormick. The other his footman, Smith. I knew it. Why did I not confront them when I had the chance? McCormick, why haven't you finished with this? I informed you of its urgency. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. One of the other labourers was taken ill. And? The only reason you were given this position because your father was head footman here. I hold that position now and it doesn't mean I will hold her in the same respect. Do you understand? I'm sorry, sir. The Duke wishes to see us both. There is a situation in the household we must address. I know all the staff personally. Just point me in their direction and I will... You'll do nothing of the kind unless it's under my instruction. Do you know much of the hostess's companion? We have all heard about her and his lordship. The Duke wishes to discuss that very issue with us. Why were they chasing me? Maybe we're looking in the wrong place. Where should I be looking? I mean, maybe there's another avenue to take. Come with me. Where are we going? You'll see. <laughs> Thank you.
Why do you really come here? I don't understand. You have my unanswerable question hidden within you. But I came here for answers. Do you not see? You have the answers. You are the key to everything. There is so much more that you know. Search your soul. I have dreams about being here, living here. What do they say? They are confusing. Do you see? I'm here, living in the house. I am Catherine. Something happens to me. You know what happened to my Catherine. I do. Your dreams are the answers. You hold them deep within you. But they are just dreams. No. Tell me everything that you see in your dreams. I am here, at the back of the house. Yes. I can see it now. I was right here. Look at what you see, Ali. Look at the view. There is so much more you know. It's the view in my dream. You are seeing yourself being chased here in the grounds. You are Catherine in your dreams. Your dream is telling you the truth. Yes! What happened to Catherine? My dreams make sense now. You have to remember, Ali. Try to remember what happened in your dream. I'm in the gardens at night. I'm being chased by two men. The rest I'm unsure of. I believe I met a fate at Highlands sometime in the past. Someone grabs me. Search inside your mind, Ali. What's happening? You are remembering. You are remembering everything. You know what you must do? Yes, sir. There has been talk of the companion and his lordship. You can trust me, sir. The matter will be kept secret. McCormack understands exactly. She is to be banished from the estate. And nobody is to know of this. Otherwise, you will both hang high on the gallows. Yes, sir. <laughs> concerned she left our service. Do you understand? We had to finish this before dawn. She's still alive.
every inch of these grounds searched. Do you understand? Yes, sir. She cannot just have disappeared. Where are you, my darling Catherine? Lord, please help me find her. We searched the grounds and found no trace of her, sir. Keep looking. Yes, yes, sir. She has left our service and no more. It is just like a servant. They never stay long. One must keep replacing them to maintain a level of trust. If I find out that you have had anything to do with this, treat this as a trivial matter. It is a trivial matter. It is nothing of the kind. Now that she has left, we can introduce you back into society as my son. She was never worthy of your attentions. You must maintain the position you hold and become the man you are supposed to be. I will never become the son you desire. You have taken my life. You know nothing of love. You shall know only my hatred. You're the new companion to the hostess, are you not? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I shall never have you dismissed from my service. Is that what you wish, sir? The servants must never find out about our love, dear Catherine. It is too late. 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 better now. You don't understand. It stopped on its own. I didn't need the medication. You didn't give me any medication. Medication? No. 
It stopped on its own. It's never done that before. I know where she is. I know where Catherine is. I know what happened to her. I have to find Peter. I have to tell him everything. <laughs> Is it, Ali? This is the place. This is where she's buried. Are you sure? Yes. I'm claustrophobic. I was buried alive. You found her. After all these years, you found her. Lord Meredith's long lost love. History in Essex. 
Yes, the man's just asked for that one. It's over in the history section over there. Oh, thank you. Would you mind holding on to that? Sure. read it together? Over a coffee? And the shadows draw down deep I watch her as she falls into her sleep As she travels through I long to touch her in her dreams And show her the love that might have been You broke the chains and set my soul free Torn between eternity You broke the chains and set my soul free Just can't die when the tides are strong No one can tell us that we were so wrong Since we were parted, the years were so dark Now we're together in love with one spirit, one heart the chains and set my soul free, torn between eternity, you broke the chains and set my soul free, torn between eternity, 
torn between eternity You broke the chains and set my soul free